This week we're doing a little video on what causes Nomad to crash on your iPad and really in all of the years that I've been using it there's only really been one thing that crashes it and that is when I'm doing a voxel remesh. So let's have a look at what causes it and before we do that we'll take a look at how you identify what's inside your iPad. So before we dive into finding out what's making it crash or what the problems are, then let's just have a look at what your system has got. So what your iPad or iPhone, if you're using an iPhone, what it's got in terms of RAM. And that's the main point that we're looking at. So go over to the App Store and download something called Geekbench. Now it comes in a couple of versions. I've got the Pro version, which is paid for, but all you need is this one. So Geekbench itself. So and this one will give you everything that you need to know. So when you open it up like this, you can basically see that you've got an iPad Pro 12.9 inch, fifth generation, um, iPad 13.9. Now you can get a lot of this information off your um, uh, system um, uh, details from your iPad. So you can go into your settings and you can just get a lot of this information. But what, what this gives you is everything in one place. And we can see straight away there that this machine's got 15.3 gig of RAM, which means it obviously 15.3 isn't the actual number, but it's, they call it a 16 gig machine. So that means that this machine is the highest end of um, the, the machines that Apple currently do. Um, so this is the 16 gig M1. So what you need to be looking at there is what that number is. If you've got, for example, the, the, the version before this, so this is a 2021 version, if you've got the 2020, you're going to have something like 6 gig of RAM. Um, the 2021, this one, is the 16 gig, but there's also an 8 gig. So you've got plenty of options there to, you know, uh, of the higher end machines. And as you go older, if you go back to a 2018 um, and you've got the one terabyte version, then you could have had 6 gig of RAM already. So that's quite a, a substantial machine. 6 gig is really the, the kind of break point. Below that, you will start having problems with the bigger models. 4 gig is fine. My older iPads have 4 gig and you can run it absolutely fine. And lower and lower uh, as you go down the specs, including the iPhone, get, get less and less. But it's good to know what you've got. So that, that you know, the, the higher you've got in terms of the RAM, the better the machine's going to be. So you can check other things. So you've got a CPU check and compute check here. So you can run benchmarks. So for your CPU, you can literally run that and it'll give you, it'll take a couple of minutes, but when it's run it, it'll give you all of the details of, of it compared to other machines. So let's just let it run for a second. So it gives me a single core score and a multi-core score. So the, the bigger and more powerful your iPad, the bigger these numbers are going to get. And there's all kinds of extra information in here. If you want to compare with other people's machines or people's machines online, there's plenty of, of information there that you can that you can use as comparisons. Um, it doesn't make a huge difference. And if you're not techie, don't worry about it. The thing that we're really after is just to be absolutely sure what's in your machine. So presuming you know what's in your machine, let's talk about uh, uh, knowing what's inside of Nomad. It is interesting to know that if you come into your um, general settings and then about, all of the information that you'll get from Apple about your iPad is what you'll see in Geekbench, but there is no mention of how much RAM is in there. You'll have your capacity, which is what is your storage, your SSD inside this, but it doesn't mention how much RAM is there for you. So you do need Geekbench to be able to see the, the amount of RAM. So let's just take a look at a model. So this one is just a ship that I'm um, just beginning to work on. So there's only one model in the um, scene. So it's called Sphere because I haven't renamed it. And uh, there is literally just that. And I've, I've made it all these parts and I've mashed them all together or merged them all together. And we want to know how uh, many polygons they are because one of the, the biggest single reasons that your machine crashes is because of the voxel remeshing. So let me just show you what that means. So first of all, always put on up here, come up to display settings and put stats on. And that means that this will appear now. And that's giving you the RAM usage. So. We've got um, used RAM, 633, which is hardly any. Free RAM, 11,946. And scene vertices, 2.9 million. So it's a, it's a lot of polygons, but it isn't a lot of RAM usage. Now, what you need to understand is, if you have an iPad 
and you um, you have 16 gig of RAM, which is the highest end, this one, you can't use all of that 16 gig. So Apple will only let you use a certain amount of it. And in this case, it will let you use 12 gig of this six gig. But Nomad will not reach a level where the polygons, the polygon count can get high enough to use all of that RAM. And we'll have a look at that as we work through it. So at the moment, it's that, that, resolu that resolution, the, the just short of 3 million, and we want to increase that. So there's a couple of ways we can increase it, and we, we're going to push this to the point where it crashes. So first of all, what we could do is go over to the next panel, and in this one, you've got multi-res, voxel, dyne, topo, and then this blank one, which we'll get to, and that, that one's where we do all the decimation or, or the triangulation. Let's put wireframe on so we can see what we're dealing with. And it's a very dense mesh like so. Turn that off again for a moment. And what we'll do is, first of all, we'll take that 2.91 uh, million and we'll just times it by four. That's, that's a basic subdivision. So if you come here to multi-res and subdivide it, uh, this mesh will, get, will have 11.65 million vertices. Are you sure? Okay. Now, if you don't have, you know that you've got a machine that's got a given amount of RAM. If you only have four gigs of RAM, if you think about it now, we're using nearly two and a half um, thousand megabytes there. So that's two and a half gig of RAM being used already. So in this machine, there's, there's nine gig left. So there's plenty, plenty to play with there. But we've already used a large chunk just on this. You can see it changing now, and I don't know why it does that, but it's changed a little bit. It must recalculate. And there's now 11.6 million vertices in this scene. So you may say, well, you know, the higher machines can, you know, can cope with a lot more. But that this video isn't about that, and it certainly isn't about talking about this machine because we want to think about why it's crashing on the lower end machines or, or certainly on on the iPhones. So if you know that two and a half gigs being used now and you've only got four well it probably wouldn't even get to that it would probably crash before it it, it gets to 11. so what we want to do is say right how how do i uh, remesh and and continue well if you remesh which is this one voxel and we remesh now the resolution here will basically even out the polygons across the surface and it will remesh it but if you think about it if we're at 11 million and you do a resolution that's something like uh let's go i won't go crazy i'll say 160 there is no correct number in here it depends on the size of the model you're working on so if i was to remesh that with 166 and hit remesh just watch what happens multi-resolution will be lost well that's fine we don't care about that and we just let it calculate now. So it takes a minute because obviously there's a lot of calculations going on there. And what it's done is it's lowered the resolution. You can see straight away how bad it looks. And it's lowered our resolution down to uh, 933 meg. And that means we've got all our RAM back there. But that's no use to us now, is it? Because one, it's made the, the, the vertex paint look horrible because it's, it's lowered it so low. And it's not really any use for what we want. But that was at 150. So two finger tap and go back. There we go. Oh, I've gone one too far there. It was there where I had everything turned off. What we'll now do is we'll go back and we'll use the remesh, but we'll go higher. So I'm going to now do it. Let's tap it in instead. Let's go really high and let's say 500. So we're remeshing at 500 and hit remesh and just see what happens. And you could hardly see any change there, but in terms of what's happened underneath, so it's now got 330K, which is substantially lower, and it's not too bad. It hasn't ruined it too much, but it has brought the number of polygons down significantly. It's, you know, 330K, so it's a third of a million now. Let's go even higher and see what happens, because you could do this quite a lot to keep freeing up your RAM. If you notice there, you've now only used like one gig so 1028 is basically a thousand megabytes, which is virtually a, a, a gig. So that's brought it down significantly. But what if we undo that? Let's go back. Okay, so I've gone back down to, let's say we're back down to our three million. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a ridiculously high number. So 
let's go voxel remesh and take it all the way up to something like 1800 and i'll hit remesh and i think you might know what's going to happen here the detail value is higher and might require a lot of memory now on a lot of machines that will crash your machine so it might survive this one on this machine on the m1 but on most of my other ipads this is where i get a crash that number is trying to generate far too many polygons for the system to cope with so if i hit okay let's just see what happens i'm pretty sure what what's going to happen so it's going to calculate and take quite a few seconds and there we go it crashes so that is the single easiest way to crash your machine and what you need to do let's start nomad up again what you need to do is just to understand what level you can push it it to based on the amount of ram you've got so if you're going to use anything in, in these panels especially the voxel remeshing you have to go up iteratively so you have to take your time and you have to increase this number and try it um, and always do a save always 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 do a save before you're doing a voxel remesh unless you're very very confident with your machine and if you learn that and you understand how that voxel remeshing is going to affect your model so let's let, let me do somewhere in between i won't do a ridiculous number so let's just do say seven six or seven hundred and do a remesh and i know confidently this machine can cope with that and as you can see it's done it and it's given me the it's basically now reduced it actually to 614 so i could have gone higher so let's go higher again I won't go any I won't go ridiculously high because it will crash so voxel remeshing keep sharp edges remesh and let's just see what that does this this could again this could push it to a crash but let's see that's now actually calculating feels like the system's hanging but it's not and there you go it's remeshed it and it's survived it now it hasn't increased it too much let me just turn the post process off again you can see it it's a little little bit higher so it's nearly four million now and if you look at it in wireframe it's crazy crazy high you can see how dense that is so so you you really don't need to be going this high for many things and what that's done is it's i mean it's still plenty of ram available on, on this machine so i can go way 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 higher than that and many many more parts than that the trick for you and the thing that you must notice is what's available here so i'm still sitting on 11 gig of free ram with less than uh, one gig used and, and it's only 3.66 million so get used to having these stats open start having a look at how much ram you've got in your machine if you've only got four and you're using two already then you're gonna you're gonna struggle if you try and double that so any of those high numbers in there are going to cause you a problem if you've got a six gig machine and you've got two used then you're going to be able to push it a little bit more so one more thing i just want to talk to you about when you're trying to understand how your machine's performing is over here so we'll come over to our this one here which is our again it's display settings and we'll pin it open little pin there and if you come down here remember that we were switching on stats here and you can see them appearing here what you can do is come down to the bottom here and you've got stats also here which is on and off here as well but when you do it here you've also got this which is switching it from left and right so now it's actually here on this side so that's just basically good to know where it is but the thing that we really want to look at is this so you've got two panels that two sliders that i want you to focus on so you've got maximum vertice count and you've got low resolution threshold so let's do the second one first so the low resolution threshold basically says this is the poly count so seven hundred thousand or lower you know bring it really really low 250,000 5 million basically whatever you want and what that does is is when you're moving the, the the scene around while you're moving it around this slider determines that that while it's moving around it will be switched to a lower resolution threshold so or, or method and that means so if you basically click the little um uh, question mark it says a lower resolution of the mesh can be displayed when you move the camera 
you can increase this value if you want to display a higher resolution of mesh. So if you're on a compromised system with low amounts of RAM, just make this lower. And that means that when you're moving it around, you're going to be working on a lower res model just for the moving around. So that's definitely something worth doing. It's very, very similar to what ZBrush does. It just gives you, a, as you're moving around in ZBrush, you're going to see a low res model and it stops and it shows you the high res. So that's a good one to have a look at. But let me just put the pin on again. And this top one is the maximum vertice count as well. So this one, if you click on the little question mark there, it says Nomad does not perform a memory check before subdivision. A high poly count can lead to crashes. So what that means is you can set the, the, the level that you want it to do a memory check. So if you know that your machine is going to crash when you're at three gigs of RAM and you're on a, on, on a machine that's going to take it to, um, say, from three million polygons to four million, then just lower this down. Or if you're on this one, like a 16 gig or an eight gig, then you can set it higher. But be careful because obviously it's good to know your machine before you do this. And that means that you're not going to be checking as much. So if you know you can cope with it, then just set it higher. But be aware of it more than anything. And what you'll find is very quickly, you'll begin to understand why your machine is crashing and when. And in the, what, nearly two years now, I've been using Nomad with four different iPad versions. The only thing that really crashes it is this, is the voxel remesh or, the, or, or when you do what's called the voxel merge. So if you understand that and you understand the remeshing levels, then you probably won't get any more crashes from Nomad, presuming you know what your RAM is in your machine. So it's amazing. We've just hit 30,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. So I can't thank you enough if you're one of those subscribers. If you're not, please hit the button and subscribe and help us to build the community. And if you're going to give us a subscribe, please give the video a thumbs up and it gets it to more people. And that means more subscribers for us, which does help the algorithm and it helps me make more content. So have a great week, everyone, and enjoy what you're modeling.